I will be the master. Namaste and good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Alisha Manandar, and I'll be the master of ceremony throughout this webinar today. A warm welcome. A warm welcome to all of you to Nescom webinar series. It feels like just yesterday that we started off with our first webinar, and we're so glad that we're already in our seventh session today. And for this, I would like to thank the entire team of Nescom webinar series for working so hard to make it possible, and our technical partner, NREN, for supporting us technically since our first webinar. I would also like to thank all our participants for showing an overwhelming response throughout all our webinars and encouraging us to do even better. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. You can go ahead, Alicia. Truly, it wouldn't be possible without you all. We have our speaker, Dr. Novin Fuyal, with us today, and he'll be sharing his experiences on capacity building in disaster risk reduction experience from South Asian context. South Asia is home to more than one fifth of the world population. This part of the population is most vulnerable to the risk of any disaster, be it natural or man-made in nature. History also suggests that South Asia is host to almost all kinds of natural catastrophes. We as Nepalese can never, probably never forget the 2015 earthquake that witnessed which killed more than 9,000 people across the country, injured thousands and destroyed around half a million homes. And as a result, the Nepalese capital is still struggling to get back on its feet. This also brings into spotlight the extreme vulnerabilities that South Asia as region being a climate change red zone faces. Climate change particularly is a growing challenge and an emerging threat that may trigger more severe disasters in future. It is in fact a learning tra uh, learning threat for the planet and is manifested in the form of disasters in every corner of the world. During the recent years, countries in the region have endured a series of catastrophic disasters, compounding their pains of poverty and poor performance in various sectors of human development, with devastating earthquakes, floods, cyclones, and droughts playing havoc with poor communities. But at the same time, the similarities between many South Asian countries in terms of shared natural hazards and vulnerabilities have created opportunities for collaboration. Our webinar today will help contribute to an enhanced understanding on means and ways of capacity building in disaster risk reduction, as well as the importance of strengthen national and regional disaster mitigation and response activities as prime protection structures against vulnerabilities in humanitarian emergencies. Now, I would like to introduce our speaker, Dr. Robin Fuyal. Dr. Novin is currently an associate professor at Department of Community Medicine, Nepalese Army Institute of Health Sciences. He is representative of Nepal Army to Ministry of Health and Population Nepal. He was also planner and operation head in Nepal's first mass evacuation of medical students from Wuhan, China during COVID-19 pandemic. Instructor and course coordinator, Hospital Preparedness for Emergencies, Hope, South Asia. Hospital Director Preparedness and Response Instructor and Training Coordinator, Nepal. Uh, he was his Disaster Drills and Mass Casualty Management Exercise Coordinator, Nepal. He did his postgraduate degree in Community Medicine from Armed Forces Medical College, AFMC Pune, India. He has also worked as a medical officer in the United Nations Stabilization Mission in Haiti from 2010 to 11 and the United Nations Assistance Mission for Iraq from 2011-12. He has also, he's also guest instructor in Medical First Response Course Director, uh, Directorate of Disaster Management in Nepal Army. His keen interest lies in disaster epidemiology and management, international health, health research and biostatistics, healthcare information system, epidemiology, policies and planning, maternal and child health, climate change and health effects and ethics in medical research. His publications are related to disaster preparedness and response, mass evacuation and quarantine state during COVID-19 pandemic and occupational health. In recognition of his significant contributions, he was awarded with a prestigious national award, Sri Prabal Janaseva Sri 2077 Presidential Medal, the United Nations Medal in March 2011, United Nations Medal UNAMI in April 2012, Swadesh Seva Padak 2010 and 12, COAS Medal Nepal Army in 2020. 
Thank you, Dr. Navin, for taking out a valuable time from your busy schedule. Be with us today. The session today will be moderated by Dr. Gombi Shrestha. Dr. Gombir is currently an assistant uh, professor in Department of Community Medicine, Maharaj Kunj Medical Campus, Institute of Medicine, Tribune University. He is research consultant to Annapurna Neurological Institute and Allied Sciences. He did his postgraduate degree in community medicine and tropical diseases from BP Koirala Institute of Health Sciences. He has also uh, worked as head of department registrar and epidemiologist in Department of Car Cancer Prevention, Control and Research, BP Koirala Memorial Cancer Hospital, Chitwan. He has also worked as IMNCI Medical Officer in Child Health Division, Department of Health Services, Ministry of Health and Population, Nepal. He has also worked as a consultant to WHO. He is alumni of Structured Operational Research and Training Initiatives. He is also national trainer for cancer prevention and control programs, as well as CBIM and CI programs. He has a broad background in public health with specific trainings and expertise in prison health, child health and cancer, as well as handling large data, such as cancer registry and Nepal demographic and health survey. He has published more than 30 articles in national and international journals. Few gentle reminders before I hand over the floor to our moderator, Dr. Gambhir. The webinar will be recorded throughout. Both English and Nepali language will be used. Please make sure to mute your microphone so as to avoid background noise. Please put your questions in the chat box, which will be addressed at the end of the webinar. Please kindly fill the feedback form, which will be posted towards the end of the webinar. And please raise your hands if you have any queries. Now I would like to hand over the floor to our moderator for today, Dr. Gambhir Shrestha. Over to you, Dr. Gambhir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Elisa, for such a nice introduction. Namaste, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome all of you on behalf of webinar committee and NESCOM. I'd also like to thank especially to Dr. Navin Fair, who is our speaker, for taking his time in today's webinar. So we are conducting this seminar session in a webinar platform, and this is our first time. So I would like to request the participants that if you have any technical issues, then please let us know via the chat in our Facebook page. I hope we are all clear about the housekeeping rules told by Dr. Elisa to everyone. Uh, so let's move on to our topic. Today's topic is on capacity building in disaster risk reduction. I would like to start with some data related to the disaster. As our country moves rapidly to unplanned urbanization and environmental degradation, Nepal has become one of the most disaster prone countries in South Asia, with earthquakes, frequent floodings, landslides, and other disasters occurring each year. In a recent publication by Center for Research on the Epidemiology of Disaster, Nepal has been listed among top 10 countries in, South, uh, in the world in terms of disaster-related mortality. And similarly, Nepal has been ranked at 12th position among the countries in the world with regards to people affected by flood every year. That's a huge burden to a country like ours. We know disaster management is a big tax and involves strategies for disaster prevention, preparedness, response, and recovery. And one of the key important aspects of this disaster management is capacity building, which we'll be hearing today. With this brief introduction, I would like to hand over this uh, webinar platform to Dr. Navin for his very exciting presentation on capacity building in disaster risk reduction, experience from South Asian context. So it's all yours, Dr. Navin. Thank you. Namaste, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Gambhir. Uh, allow me to share the slide, please. Okay, is my slide visible? Yes, it is visible. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gumbir. Thank you, Dr. Elisa, for the wonderful introduction. Namaste, everyone, and good evening. I am Dr. Navin Fiyan, Associate Professor from Department of Community Medicine, the Army Institute of Health Sciences. I'll be with you for the next one hour 
Thank you, Nescom, for inviting me today. Today, I'm going to speak about capacity building in disaster risk reduction and experience from South Asian context. I do not say that I'm a, you, I have a huge experience, but I have been exposed to a few capacity building activities, uh, which I would like to share with you all today. So South Asia, it consists of eight countries, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, and Pakistan. We all know that SARC is an economic cooperation in this region. South Asia, it only occupies 3.5 percentage of the world's land surface, but in terms of population, it accommodates 24 percentage of the world population. So it's the most populous and most densely populated uh, part in the world. And South Asia is also exposed to different kinds of hazards. We'll talk about this in coming presentations. When we also talk about what is hazard, what is a disaster, what's the difference, uh, what do you mean by risk? And later on, on the half, remaining half of the presentation, I'll be focusing on the capacity building activities that we have been carrying out in this region. Uh, in this slide, you can see that there has been numerous studies that has been carried out in Southeast South Asian region. And they all saw that all kinds of hazards are found in South Asia. We have volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, floods, cyclones, wildfires, and absolutely everything. So hazard is there in South Asia. That's what we just want to show with this slide. Uh, this is a earthquake hazard map in South Asia. South Asia is prone to earthquake hazards. We can see in this picture, the hazards are very high in different regions in Nepal, as well as in Bhutan and Pakistan and Afghanistan. The hazard map shows uh, the higher frequency of these hazards happening in this region. South Asia is also uh, prone to landslides and droughts. And flood is the most common hazard in South Asia. It's so common that 64% of the global flood occur in South Asia alone. And flood is the most common hazard in Southeast, South Asian region itself. I just want to go briefly about the, what are the hazards that are present here. But the question is, do all these hazards cause disasters? We said that we have natural hazards, we have human induced hazards and many things, but are they capable of causing disasters? So presence of hazard, it does not mean, it does not always mean that you'll have a disaster. A disaster happens when uh, people are exposed to it, when the community is exposed to it, and the community is not able to cope up with the effects of the hazards. So disaster happens when a community is not appropriately prepared or resource to organize the impact of the hazard. So what we say, what we say is disaster therefore can be prevented and should be prevented. And hazards always do not mean disasters. One example is the Gorkha earthquake itself. In 2015, the Gorkha earthquake, that hazard caused a disaster because we're not able to cope with it. We were overwhelmed and we had to ask for support. But after the Gorkha earthquake also, there has been numerous earthquakes that we have been facing and that we have heard and we have, been, we have experienced, but they have not caused disasters. So uh, the key point that I wanted to stress is hazard does not always mean disasters. Now let's come to the next terminological risk. Now this uh, slide shows that South Asia has hazards, but what is the risk of hazards in different countries? Risk of hazards being converted into disasters. For example, the hazards are of flooding, droughts and heat waves are very low in Bhutan, but the adaptive capacity is very high. Similarly, the hazards of floods are very high in Bangladesh, but the adaptive capacity is very low. So risk has two components. It has one of those components is hazard, another component is vulnerability. 
which we can also define as adaptive capacity. So flood hazard is very low in Bhutan, but due to its high adaptive capacity, that country can handle that and stop it from being a disaster. Whereas the same flood hazard, which is very high in Bangladesh, due to its low adaptive capacity, the country may not be able to handle. So this is what I was just wanted to show that there's something called as a risk. As that doesn't always mean risk. We have to be vulnerable from this. Uh, oh, sorry to interrupt you, Dr. Novin. Can yes. you switch on your video? People are asking if he, if they can see, uh, if they, if you can okay. uh, switch on the video. Thank you. Thank can you. So much. Can you see my video? Yeah, yeah, it is visible. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Novin. Okay, thank you so much. Now, this is a very interesting uh, definition uh, from Professor Eric Nozi. Uh, there has been numerous definition of disasters, but what I find this the most practical definition. Uh, he says that disasters are defined by what they do to the people. Otherwise, they are simply interesting geological or meteorological phenomenon. So earthquakes are also interesting. You know, cyclones are interesting. The way it occur, the phenomenon that makes it occur. but uh, the, whenever they affect people, it may turn into disasters. So there is just a definition I just wanted to uh, see. Here. Now in this slide, you can see three different things. You can see the occurrence of disasters worldwide from 2008 to 2000 and sorry, 1998 to 2017. Uh, you might see that the yellow colored areas that is that represents Asia. Most of the hazards have occurred in Asian region. And the number of people which are affected are also living in the Asian region, as shown in the second line. And the estimated number of damages also occur more in Asia. So basically, the occurrence of disaster is also high in Asia. The number of people affected are also high. And at the same time, the estimated number of damages are also high. That's what we wanted to highlight in this presentation. Uh, in this picture, you can just see the numbers of disaster by type since 1998 to 2017. And the flood is the most leading cause of disasters worldwide, accounting 43.4 percentage of the total disasters that have occurred in the world. Uh, most of it, 43.4 percent has occurred because of flood, which is followed by storm and earthquake. Now, this uh, figure shows the disaster trend. Now, you can see in this picture, since 1940, uh, the occurrence of disaster suddenly rises. And now, some people may might say, okay, there has been increased reporting after 1940. They got the hairy pinny body hockey but what is more important is the direction and the steepness of the curve. Uh, we can, it is definitely rising. The numbers of disasters are rising. Number of natural disasters are rising. And with unplanned urbanization and climate change, it is expected that uh, the number of natural disasters as well as human induced disasters will rise in future. And the effect will be more on South Asia. Uh, disasters is related to economy. There are huge economic loss which are associated with disasters. This is just a pictorial representation. Uh, this figure was meant for some other purpose. They have calculated what is the cost? How much does it cost to handle flood? How much does it cost to handle an earthquake? The figures are just arbitrary. Uh, but what is more important is that every disaster is associated with economic loss. And for countries like us, like in Nepal, we have a big earthquake every 70 years. Now let's relate that to our life expectancy. An average Nepalese lives life expectancy is also around 70 years. So in his whole lifetime, one average Nepali is able to afford to build one house. But that house also falls down because every 70 years, uh, there is a big earthquake, right? 
the next generation goes into a continuous cycle, which is called as a disaster poverty cycle. Right? That is why uh, we are poor because of disasters. And this is why poor because of disasters. And we will continuously go on this cycle uh, for many more years. So, again, the slide I will highlight is the World Bank Nikaleko report. It was around 2005 and 2006. They calculate what is, what is the average cost per natural disaster? How, many, how much do countries spend? And what they found out was that the high human indexed countries develop high human development VACO countries, high SDI VACO countries. They spend around 447 million. Please don't go into the figures. This, they are, we are just trying to explain what it means. But in a low income countries, they spend around 61 million per disasters. So the question to think is, does this mean we are paying less? Yes, in terms of per disaster, we might be paying less. But please remember the Agadipo slide, the frequency of disasters in South Asia is high. Of a high human index Paco countries, ma, they might face one disaster, to time ma, we might have faced 10 disasters. So if you multiply this 61 million by 10 times, at the end, we'll be paying 610 million. So even though our capacity to spend in natural disaster is very less, but eventually we are paying more because of the frequency of uh, disasters that are happening in this part of South Asia. This is a figure the, they have uh, from global assessment report on disaster risk reduction. What they have done is they have modeled, uh, they have modeled the fatalities per million per year in disasters and they have calculated the risk. And the findings are again, same thing. They have concluded that uh, in case of disasters, uh, the South Asian regions are expected to have more fatalities, more mortalities than the remaining countries in the world, as highlighted in this picture. So we have more disasters, more people will be affected, the disasters are rising, we spend more on disasters and our people also die more because of disasters. This is the situation in South Asia. And you can see from this graph, uh, it's from a UN World Urbanization Prospect. It is expected that the total population in South Asia will rise in future. The rural population is expected to decrease, but the urban population is expected to increase. What it means is we'll have unorganized urbanization in future. We have the same land space, but in the same land space, we'll have more people. And because of this unplanned organization, we'll attract more human-induced disasters in futures. And the number of disasters in South Asia will rise in future. That's what the, we can conclude from this graph. Another thing that I want to highlight is about road traffic accident. It's occurring as a silent disaster uh, in our part of the region also. This is the price that we have to pay for urbanization, for development of roads. Uh, and I mean unsafe roads. Our, our roads are not that safe till now. So globally also, every minute, two people are dying because of road traffic accidents. And 20 more people are being injured for every death. What it means is right from the start of this presentation, Maybe 20 to 30 people have already died because of road traffic accidents and nearly 600 to 700 people are injured and are on the way to the hospital. So road traffic accident is occurring as a silent disaster. And what is more important is in a low income setting like ours, it is killing the young people more. In high income settings, usually a old person is dying because of falls and other other hazards, but in low income settings, uh, it's road traffic accidents, which is killing young people. And this again goes into an intergenerational cycle that young people might be the future of the family, the earning member of the family, 
and the whole family goes into a disaster poverty cycle. So this is what I wanted to highlight with this picture. Uh, this is a picture from World Economic Forum. We might have heard there has been tremendous expenditure in preparedness. There are so many activities related to preparedness, but do they yield any benefit? Yes, it has been shown by numerous studies, numerous researches, and numerous experiences throughout the world that if you invest in preparedness, definitely you will be able to reduce the immediate effect of disasters and you can also bounce back better. Your resilience will be high. It allows a faster recovery. That's why so much of effort is being uh, given to for preparedness. I hope I'm uh, edible. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are completely uh, audible, really audible. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor Gumbir. You know, it happens in this session, so please keep me reminding. Okay, there is in your screen, you can see a picture. This is from 2015. There were three big earthquakes that occurred in the world. Uh, one was in Chile, another was in Nepal and in Japan. In Japan and Nepal, 7.8 Richter scale magnitude earthquake occurred, whereas, whereas in Chile, a much higher 8.3 Richter scale uh, magnitude earthquake occurred. Uh, but if you look at the number of deaths, nearly 9,000 people died in Nepal, whereas 14 people died in Chile and no one died in Japan. The question is why? Why such uh, disparity in disasters? The answer is simple. Uh, if you just relate it to the previous equation that I showed, the formula of risk, the hazard in risk is equal to hazard into vulnerability. The hazard was similar, much higher in Chile, but maybe our vulnerability was high. I think we might, we can accept that our vulnerability is higher than Japan, right? So even though the hazard was similar because of our vulnerability, we lost a large number of people during that time. Now, how to decrease this? How to decrease the risk? Now, to decrease the risk, you have to change either the hazard or the vulnerability. Now, the hazard you cannot change. We, we stay in top of, the, uh, uh, top of the place where the tectonic plates are converging. The hazard will always be there. So you cannot change the hazard. Now, the vulnerability is very difficult to change. In order to change the vulnerability, we have to improve the whole socioeconomic status of the whole country. So uh, there has been many researches on how to decrease the risk. And people have found one important way of decreasing the risk is through capacity building. So I have come up with a new formula. Risk is equal to hazard into vulnerability divided by capacity. So capacity building is an activity which will divide the product of hazard and vulnerability. That's why so many efforts are being paid for capacity building. I think there's something, uh, your capacity building power thing, it has a power to divide. And the power of division is much more than the power of multiplication and addition, once again. If you remember the mathematics, 10 classical mathematics, there is a rule board mass, that's division comes before multiplication. You might have heard divide, divide and rule right, concept. So capacity building activities, if we just spend, uh, and if we just spend our time, spend our money, spend our human resources, uh, you will be able to decrease the risk. A lot of effort is being uh, given for this capacity building activities. And today's presentation is also about capacity building activities. So I will be uh, I will be presenting on the capacity building activities in the remaining half of the presentation. Of capacity building activities is huge. It is not only related to health. It is related to in engineering sector. It is related to security. It is related to other sectors as well. 
सो आई बी जस्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट हेल्थ सेक्टर्स हेल्थ सेक्टर्स में स्मॉल पार्ट इन विच आई वॉज अ पार्ट अफ अब अ मच बिगर टीम दैट आई लाइक टू शेयर इन द रिमेनिंग पार्ट ऑफ द प्रेजेंटेशन ओके वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट मोस्ट यो होप कोर्स साउथ एशिया भाई कोर्स दैट वी हेव बीन रनिंग इन साउथ एशिया इट्स इंपोर्टेंट कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग एक्टिविटीज इन साउथ एशिया दैट वी हेव बीन कैरिड कैरिंग आउट दिस कोर्स इज डेवलप्ड बाई यूएस एड एंड ऑफिस ऑफ फॉरेन डिजास्टर असिस्टेंस दिस कोर्स वॉज ओरिजिनली डिजाइन बाई जोन हपकिस यूनिवर्सिटी फर इंटरनेशनल इमर्जेन्सी एंड डिजास्टर रिफ्यूज स्टडिज अल्ले आज इन कोलाबोरेशन विथ एशियन डिजास्टर प्रिपेरनेस सेंटर एंड एनसेट नेपाल एक्सपर्ट्स फ्रॉम इंडिया इंडोनेशिया नेपाल एंड फिलिपिन्स Uh, we update this course and we revise this course recently i was a part of a team which uh, revised this course right this is a fourth day residential course which is oriented for the hospital managers doctors nurses and healthcare workers and after the end of this course the participants will be able to conduct a vulnerability assessment of hospitals they will be able, able to develop a disaster response plan and they'll be able to manage the disaster response also so our team which we called a hope family it's a very good team of passionate people uh, and we are more like a family right on this but we conduct this course regularly and we have conducted this course in nepal sri lanka india pakistan and afghanistan and some of our team members have also gone to philippines as well and other countries for hope course for conduction of hope course in nepal we have been carrying out this course in all the provinces and we have carried out this course extensively in province 3 4 5 6 and 7 and in many people there are thousands of people have already benefited from this course uh, one of the one of the weakness of this course is this course is funding dependent Right? we do not have a continuous funding for this course so sometimes this course is supported by who sometimes this course is supported by save the children recently la the last two batches of hope course one was supported by the ministry of health and the last course that we did recently was supported by national disaster and risk management authority we intended we intend to continue this course further right but uh, uh, we hope will be able to gather more funding and support later on this the you hope course conduct garnale we require instructors this ko lagi we have a separate course called as hope tfi so in this we try to build capacities of instructors tfi stands for training for instructors so hope course gore ko participant but we identify potential instructors that we later call for um, the hope tfi and hope tfi is a very systematic standardized and it's a hectic training it is more like a faculty development training it's a residential training and at the end we expect to have i didn't we have identified few uh, instructors who will be able to carry out this hope course in future so hope tfi पची पनी, we call the instructors as assistant instructors, and based on their performance, uh, we make them instructors. And instructors बाद में बिस्तारे coordinators, monitors कर दे. There is a progression in hope course as well. Uh, we have conducted, our team has conducted this TFI courses in Nepal and India. अब uh, recently, अब in near future also, very soon, a uh, TFI course is being held in Sri Lanka and some of our team members will be there to conduct this course in nepal also we invite people from south asian countries and we make them instructors and we send them back so that is what we did for instructors of india and sri lanka we conducted hope course in sri lanka and identified few people we brought them to nepal conducted a tfi course now they are able to conduct this course in sri lanka on their own this is how we are building the hope capacity in south asia uh one important uh, 
the regional consultation that I got an opportunity to take part was in regional consultation of strengthening of emergency medical teams. Uh, EMT is a WHO initiative. Uh, EM to just to uh, tell what EMT is, uh, if you just remember, there are so many foreign medical teams that came and assisted us during the earthquake. So uh, during disaster, we require support from other countries as well. So this EMT initiative is an initiative of WHO in which they try to build capacity of countries to build their own uh, emergency medical teams, which consist of doctors, nurses, and paramedics. So they will be able to carry out their activities inside their own country. And if needed, they'll be able to extend this help to other countries as well. So there are different grades of EMTs, uh, emergency medical team, when there are different classification of teams, so to say. So if there is a disaster in some other part of the globe or a country, if we have an EMT, WHO certified EMT, uh, we can apply to go over there and help during emergencies. So this is an initiative from EMT to promote rapid deployment and efficient coordination of emergency medical teams. On the EMT initiative, we have uh, two teams that we have prepared in Nepal. Uh, one team was prepared before. On the ARCO team, I would like to talk about this. The first team is the Emergency Medical Response Team of Nepal Army Medical Corps. Actually, this was envisaged before. I am your disaster response and management cell, Anisa, Nepal Army Medical Corps. And, and they have found, they formed the concept of having an emergency medical response team. The concept is same. During our earthquake, within few hours, many people from many countries supported us. Bhutan came, India came, Bangladesh came. And then we also realized if there is a disaster in the nearby countries, we should be able to also do the same. That's why we started in uh, concept building on emergency medical response team. I, I was also a part of building this concept and training people. So what is emergency medical response team? It's a team which consists of multiple teams. We have a very small team of four members and the largest team members is of 64. So it's a multiple team and depending upon the type of disaster, we deploy our teams. The four main teams, eight main team, 32 member team and 64 member team. The 64 member team is the entire field hospital itself. Uh, we are deploying the four member team regularly. Eight member team also we have been deploying regularly. We deployed our four member team to Wuhan, China uh, during the COVID-19 evacuation. And the 64 member team, say, we regularly in coordination with the Ministry of Health and Population, we have been organizing medical camps. In the medical camps, we go to the EMRT concept and we test the mobilization of our teams. Well, some of three, four big camps, and we have tested them successfully using our field hospitals. So this is in similar to the EMT concept of uh, WHO. And even, even we have talked with WHO regarding this, we already have a same EMT in our country. It is just named EMRT. Why don't you certify this? And in addition to this, we have a globally pre-positioned EMTs in many countries. If you, we go to UN missions, and even UN missions, we have level one hospitals and level one plus hospitals. So I'm pre-positioned EMTs the globally already So that's what we want them to catch as well. But this is a national asset that we are building. And we are learning day by day. Jati Gardapani, fully functional team, and self sufficient, but still we are trying to build. And one of the important part of this team is the ESOMT. It's an eight member epidemiological surveillance and outbreak management team that we have been trying to form uh, in case of public health emergencies. Uh, we deploy this for our own troops, if there is an outbreak inside our troop or if any 
handling any public health emergencies. And ESCO capacity, we are trying, we are building. At the national level, we have something called as EMDT. So based on that EMD, EMT concept, I mean, say early medical deployment team so, uh, throughout the country. This we have done through the Health Emergency Operations Center and a hub and satellite network under your team. The government of Nepal has identified more than 25 big hospitals throughout the country as hub hospitals. And uh, more, 50, more than 50 bed bedded hospitals in the geographical region of these hospitals are recognized as satellite hospitals. So in case of uh, disaster, it's a private, uh, public private mixed type of activity. These hub and satellite hospitals are supposed to work together in a coordinated way under the leadership of Ministry of Health. So under this concept, we have made disaster plan of all these hospitals, and we have also established, helped them establish EMDTs. So right now there are more than 25 EMDTs throughout the country. Maybe uh, their capacity has not been in, increased, more, not been optimum. We have been involved in capacity building of these teams. Uh, we also conducted a physical and virtual training of EMDT train recently. On the early Ministry of Health, SOP of EMDTs. So in future, we'll be having more early medical deployment teams throughout the countries. So Poila ko just awasta udaina, can't one no baira. Disaster by Alevon Epony, Carpon de Hisopi resources, Lerazan Pony of Statue, or was a by establishing these teams in multiple places, maybe they'll be able to handle the disaster on their own on Epony Esma Milagirasu. And we are being involved in capacity building of these teams. We'll also the Kosari Boda Bodara Lerazani, Kosari standardized Goroni, when they come to the Epony, I mean, also. I hope. My slides are still visible. Can I break the bass in Olani, Dr. Gombir? China, China, Dr. Novin. It is quite clear. Your sound is quite clear. Thank you. Okay. Uh, please uh, tell me if I exceed the time as well. Eh? well I, I'll try to keep it in time. Okay. okay, okay. Uh, I'd like to share you another important workshop. It's a very important capacity building workshop and very encouraging as, uh, as well. Uh, in the picture, you can see four NESCOM members. Dr. Lochana, Dr. Bikal, and Dr. Razan. And in the background, you can also see the logo of NESCOM. Actually, this is the first project that we did under NESCOM. Uh, thanks to Dr. Razan, he has been, he had been a tremendous help. Dr. Razan NESCOM So what happened was, uh, there were numerous projects conducted in Nepal. Pahila pahila dehi 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 project bhai raha hai. Building the mass casualty management plans in hospitals. So, but because of lack of funding and due to many, many things, there has been discontinuity. So, uh, WHO approached us uh, for review and update of this mass casualty management plans. And we started this in Kathmandu Valley, beginning, beginning with five Hub Hospitals, Beer Hospital, Srivrindra Hospital, uh, TUTS, Civil Hospital, and Bhaktapur Hospital, and Patan Hospital. We started extending it more. So this workshop was about reviewing and updating the mass casualty management plans. But during the conduction of the workshop, we realized that many hospitals got the disaster plan. So we started developing the mass casualty management plan as well within in the same workshop. So we carried this under the leadership of Health Emergency Operation Center. The target was urban satellite hospital. And we brought all the hospital directors and the member of disaster committees in one floor. We made them sit for four days. It was a residential training. And they revised and updated their mass casualty management plan. So we started this in the hub and satellite hospital network of Kathmandu, in which we conducted this in six hub hospital and nearly 30 hosp uh, 
30 satellite hospitals in Kathmandu Valley itself. So your mass casualty management uh, review and update plan is very important to us and for NESCOM as well. The NESCOM like recognize Garoni company MCM review and update works up like Thank to many thanks to WHO country office Nepal. I was involved in capacity building. I was a member of technical working group of HEOC from 2016 to 2019. In this period, we did many things. We developed the SOP of HEOC. We developed the concept of hub and satellite hospitals. How would they function? How would they communicate? How would they coordinate? And so we were involved in many capacity building activities of the HEOC itself, PHEOC itself, and the hub and satellite system. We conducted drills, we conducted the trainings, and policy and planning activities were carried out extensively during this period. Uh, I was also involved with HEOC in development of the incident command system. And if you are from any hub hospitals, like if you are from TUTH hospital, or pardon hospital or Srebrenica hospital, you might have noticed a big disaster store in this hospital. These are contingency stores. So during this period, uh, this contingency stores were built and set up in hub hospital as well. In this picture, you can see, uh, this is a HUC technical team for COVID-19. You can see Dr. Bickel in this picture from uh, NESCOM. At that time, we were conducting the Wuhan evacuation and we realized that we had no guidelines and no policies regarding COVID-19. So this team of Nepal Army, Nepal Police, Ministry of, of Health and Population and WHO, uh, Country Office Nepal, they sat down together and they started writing the first guidelines for managing COVID-19 in Nepal. So which later on, based on that guideline, extensive capacity building activities were carried out throughout the country by individual institutions also. So this is what we did in HUC. Similarly, our national level, my HUC, when I asked, in the provincial level, we have provincial HUCs. So this provincial HUCs were also recently set up. So in 2018, uh, we also uh, conducted capacity building activities of provincial HUCs. So we conducted a program in Gandaki province in which we also uh, called the stakeholders from PHUCs of province five, six, and seven, and uh, uh, builded their capacity. Uh, so we had a wonderful team of uh, Dr. Pradeep Baidya, he's an assistant dean of uh, TUTH. Uh, we has, we is also our mentor in this team and Dr. Asis from Parton Academy of Health Sciences. We three of us were involved in this PHUC capacity building. Now the PHUCs are able to conduct the capacity building activities on their own. Uh, we have SDPR, we have HOPE, and we have SOPs. We have SOPs for EMDTs. And now it's very good to see that they're able to conduct these uh, capacity building activities on their own. Okay, another important program, you say I'm the late government like say SDPR, it's our own program. It's our first indigenous program once on disaster management. Most of the time we have adopted trainings from outside and you know, like contextualize Varera and this person, then we teach them. SDPR, I mean, Nepal, Nepal, it is a Banako program on Erebonso. SDPR stands for Hospital Disaster Preparedness and Response Plan. You do mass casualty management plans in hub hospitals, uh, like say, Amle. What we identified was they were only catering to earthquakes. And it is especially hospital internal disasters, or say, they were not able to cater. So we sat down and our team revised, updated to include multi hazard response. So now it is known as SDPR workshop, Hospital Disaster Preparedness and Response Workshop. And so after the end of this workshop, the participants are able to make a SDPR plan for their own hub, for their hospitals, which is integrated with the hub and satellite system. 
and which acts under the leadership of HEOC. You so we integrate it with SDPR. So we carried out this in province 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 7. Gandaki province carried out this on this own. And we did uh, uh, support in some ways. And we are proud to say that uh, nearly 150 hospitals in Nepal, in all the provinces, now have a hospital disaster preparedness and response plan, which is integrated with the hub and satellite system. Uh, but again, the challenge is the continuity of this SDPR plan, because people in hospitals change frequently. And the SDPR plan, if they are not updated at times, if they are not revised at times, Again, after 10 or 15 years, we may lose all the capacity that we have already built till now. So again, these are funding dependent. So whenever we have funding, we go to these places and carry out the, carry out the training. Sometimes the fundings are from uh, UN agencies. Sometimes the fundings are from province itself. And sometimes the fundings are from individual hospitals also. So, we have been building SGPR plans based on the fundings that we, have, we are receiving. And just, because, just before COVID-19, we realized that our SGPR plan lacked an outbreak management plan. SGPR plan was multi hazard but outbreak management plan was not So what will these hospitals do in case of public health emergencies? So, as an extension of SDPR, uh, we designed and conducted a two days non-residential training in Kathmandu, uh, which was uh, first uh, done with Hub and Satellite Hospitals of Kathmandu Valley. It was a first piloting, actually we did a piloting. We, did, so we took support from Patan Academy of Health Sciences. On it is the EA outbreak management plan we extended to all other provinces in Nepal. And now uh, all the hub and satellite hospitals in different provinces have a SDPR plan along with the outbreak management plan. Your outbreak management plan, it's not about the community management of outbreaks, it's the hospital management of outbreaks. Uh, we also experienced a huge number of people uh, in hospitals during the second wave of COVID. So this is the situation, how should the hospital respond? Whenever we focused on developing five or six important, simple but important things in a hospital. For a hospital screening trials, triage universal, epidemic triage universal. There should be a separate epidemic emergency unit. There should be an isolation facility. There should be donning and doffing practices. In, in uh, IPC practices or Hunu Parsa, whenever before COVID, we started building this outbreak management plan. And the same structure was used for management of COVID uh, after the pandemic. Yes? So uh, we are very thankful for all the supporters who helped us in, uh, in making this outbreak management plan. Actually, company IOPOSI COVID management time. We have a wonderful team of experts which conduct mass casualty exercise regularly. Uh, this mass casualty exercise is being conducted uh, uh, in different hospitals, HUCs, and as well as PHUCs. So what we do is we conduct two types of uh, simulation exercise natural and human induced disaster drills and the outbreak drills and the objective of this is to check the sdpr plans we have a very wonderful team uh logistic company guards makeup pony guards the disaster outbreak simulation plan pony guards control pony guards and at the same time monitoring and evaluation pony guards so what do we do is we check the sdpr plans of hospitals we also check the coordination mechanisms of the hub and satellite hospital of the HUC and PHUCs. So we have conducted drills in all provinces of Nepal within the hub and satellite network. 
एटलीस्ट सात वा अथवा आठ वा लार्ज स्किल ड्रिल्स हेव बीन कंडक्टेड इन ऑल प्रोविंसेस बाय आउट टीम अभी अर्थक्वेक एफेक्टेड डिस्ट्रिक्स सिक्स अर्थक्वेक एफेक्टेड डिस्ट्रिक्स में इंडिविजुअल हस्पिटल्स में गए वी हेव मेड देर एसडीपीआर प्लांस एंड कंडक्टेड दिस ड्रिल्स एंड वी हेव इवन कंडक्टेड ड्रिल्स इन प्राइमरी हेल्थ केयर सेंटर्स अभी हेल्थ पोस्ट वाले पैला पैला थी तेस में डिजास्टर प्लान रिल्स कर एंड इन पाटन हॉस्पिटल वी कंडक्टेड अ पब्लिक हेल्थ इमर्जेन्सी ड्रिल दिस वाज विथ आवर वंडरफुल टीम फ्रॉम पाटन हॉस्पिटल इट सेल्फ सो मास कैजुअल्टी एक्सरसाइजेस वी हैव बीन कंडक्टिंग रेगुलरली एंड दिस इज आल्सो वन ऑफ द कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग एक्टिविटीज पीपल लर्न हाउ टू कंडक्ट अ मास कैजुअल्टी एक्सरसाइज नो इन मेनी प्रोविन्सेस दे आर डुइंग ऑन देयर ओन हाई अनि वी डू नॉट हैव टू गो देयर आफै गरिरहनु भएको छ अभी तेस पच्चीस डिजास्टर साइमुलेसन कर एकदम गाड़ो एंड वन अफ द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेन्ट थिंग टू चेक इज कोडिनेसन मेकानिजम बिकज इट्स अ मल्टी सैक्टोरियल एप्रोच अही कुछ हमी ये डिजास्टर ड्रिल्स कंडक्ट कर इन पिक्चर यू कैन सी वी हेव कंडक्टेड दिस ड्रिल इन द एयरपोर्ट ट्रिवन इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट जहाँ से एयरपोर्ट को डिजास्टर प्लान रोर्डिनेसन मेना मेकानिजम विथ एमओएचपी लाइन हम चेक कर एयरपोर्ट अल्सो कंडक्ट्स एनदर ड्रिल इन कोडिनेसन विथ काठमंडू मेडिकल कलेज हाई जिसमें उ गाइडलाइन छाइकाओ गाइडलाइन हो अंतर्गत ड्रिल्स वी टेक पार्ट इन दैट एज वेल अस पच्चीस संगसंगे अरु ड्रिल्स दिस इज अ वेरी इंट्रेस्टिंग ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग प्रोग्राम दैट वी आर कैरिंग आउट विथ द यूएस एम्बेसी अस पच्चीस यूएस अफिस अफ डिफेन्स कपरेशन दिस एक्चुअली दिस इज अ प्रोग्राम अफ कर्नल डॉक्टर सुनीता पंत सी इज अनेस्थेसियोलॉजिस्ट इन आवर हॉस्पिटल एंड वी आर अ पार्ट अफ हर टीम सो व्हाट वी रियलाइज वाज इन द एमबीबीएस करिकुलम दे इज नो दे इज नो सेपरेट डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट सिलेबस वी ओनली हेव डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट को चैप्टर इन कम्युनिटी मेडिशन एट वन चैप्टर विच डज विच इट डज नट गिव एनी सीग्निफिकेन्ट एक्सपोजर एंड लेटर ऑन दिज मेडिकल स्टूडेंट्स दिज नर्सिंग स्टूडेंट्स दे आर बाउंड टू फेस दिस डिजास्टर सीचुएसन अंत बेला में कसरी हेन्डल कर हिसाब से योग गैप एड्रेस कर डिजाइन द प्रोग्राम कॉलेज डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एंड अवेरनेस प्रोग्राम इन सपोर्ट विथ यूएस एमबीसी दिस वाज ओरिएंटेड फॉर थर्ड इयर एंड फोर्थ इयर मेडिकल स्टूडेंट एंड नर्सिंग स्टूडेंट्स एंड वी कंडक्टेड फाइव डी मैप प्रोग्राम्स टू इन श्री वीरेंद्र हॉस्पिटल वन इन नेपलीज आर्मी इंस्टिट्यूट अफ हेल्थ साइंसेस एट मणिपाल हस्पिटल में नहीं गये एंड वी कंडक्टेड इट इन किस्ट मेडिकल कलेज टू इट्स अ टू डे प्रोग्राम इन विच वी गिव दिम ओरिएंटेशन अबाउट द डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट फ्रेमवर्क्स इन नेपाल एज एज वेल एज डिफ्रेंट एस्पेक्ट्स रिटेड टू डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट अभी साइड बाई साइड वी अल्सो गिव अ हेन्ड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग बीएलएस ट्रेनिंग संगसंग बट अगेन दिस इज अल्सो फंडिंग डिपेन्डेंट हाई अभी इट हेज बीन अट Some time we have not conducted this training, maybe because of COVID. Like that, here, please stop by us. Well, we'd like to conduct this in future, and we'd like to encourage others to conduct similar things in the medical colleges as well. Okay, South Asia, some some of the camp work that here. Being in the army, we also work with the U.S. Pacific Command. I uh, U.S. Pacific Command looks after the after the Indo-Pacific region, and. Indo Pacific region, ma many capacity building activities they are carrying out, and we carry we conduct many activities along with them, and one of the important activities is a disaster response expertise and exchange, which is, which we call as DRI. It's the largest exercise in Nepal. It's a multinational exercise in which uh, many countries participate from the Indo Pacific region, and. the main aim of this exercise is to check the regional coordination and the country level coordination in case of disasters so i have participated in three dri in the past sometimes as a facilitator of hoc sometimes as a disaster risk simulation coordinator 
So here are the few pictures of the tree. Uh, well, the first picture is a team of health emergency operation center in which, which was led by uh, Major General Dr. Arun Yopane, who also led the medical operation for CCMC in COVID-19. And we also can see in the picture colleagues from WHO, different security forces, as well as Ministry of Health and Population. And it, this is a very wonderful exercise. And in case if you get a chance to participate in this exercise later on, please do. Uh, most of the exercise is conducted by Nepalese Army, but since they are conducted at provincial level right now, involvement of hospitals and medical colleges will be done uh, so please, if you hear about, if I hear this exercise, I'll be communicating to you also. And if you get a chance, please participate in exercise like this. <clears throat> uh, with US uh, Pacific Command, we have been doing many other capacity building activities as well. Uh, one training that we conducted along with them, it was a joint training was risk communication by leaders for leaders in which US Pacific Command sent us support. They sent us the experts from CDC and we conducted a one week training on disaster risk communication. Uh, with this uh, capacity was building was meant for Nepal Army, Nepal Police, APF, Ministry of Health and Ministry of Home Affairs. So uh, this is a very good training. Uh, similar trainings are being conducted by WHO and Ministry of Health right now. Uh, the aim is same thing. How do you communicate during disasters? And there are different kinds of leaders, the highest level leaders to the bottom leaders. And depending upon their leadership and their target population, how do they communicate during disasters so that our risk communication also manages the disasters. That's the main aim of this program. Um, and we call this as SME, Subject Matter Ex Expert Exchange. And the program that we are engaged with the Pacific Command in the Indo-Pacific region is the Force Health Protection. Uh, force Health Protection is actually a huge uh, thing. It is the doctrine of health protection in armed forces, which actually involves everything, preventive, promotive, curative, and rehabilitative care for armed forces. You capacity building Sang Sangai, Gari Rasu in the Pacific region. So it's supported by the US Army Pacific Command. And this was a series of workshops are held. Koile, the workshop is held in Bangladesh, sometimes it's held in Nepal. And multiple experts come in, most mostly from the security forces. And we try to enhance our capacity. Uh, by sharing our experience and by promoting what our best practices with each other and then, so that we also all of us adopt each other's best practice that is the uh, motive of for self protection we are actively engaged with this and we we will continue to uh, get, engage in future as well covid-19 Okay, we, I was the part of the team, part of a bigger team uh, who conducted the Nepal's first air mass evacuation. After that, I was a member of higher level committee of Corona in which we made the initial management plan for COVID in Nepal. For a brief amount of time, very short period of time, I was in the incident command system of Ministry of Health and Population. But uh, whatever in whatever committee I was, the main thing what I was doing was uh, capacity building. So I was working with this good team on ground, which was led by many experts, like Dr. Bikal, Dr. Asis, Dr. Moon, Dr. Lee. Uh, so I was a part of this team and we helped uh, build capacities of the army capacity of the health forces in the army, as well as in the civilian sector as well during COVID-19. Okay, this is a very interesting project that we received from for NESCOM. Uh, WHO gave us a chance to conduct 
the first national conference for rapid response teams in Nepal. And you can see a uh, few members of uh, in NESCOM in this, Dr. Lee is there, Dr. Namrata is there, and Dr. Dharti is there. So well, what this team did was with support from WHO country office Nepal, we conducted the national conference. And at the same time, we also even conducted a software-based outbreak management simulation. Uh, this was done wonderfully by Dr. Lee, and it was highly appreciated. Uh, we hope that we will get similar chances in future. Uh, is China, but still we are hoping for it. So capacity building of rapid response teams, we got one chance to uh, participate, and we are very thankful for uh, EDCD and WHO country office Nepal for this. Uh, another collaboration that we are being doing is with Tamasic Foundation in Singapore. Uh, the Singa Sing Health in Singapore had invited uh, the many people from Nepal and they conducted a training called as Master's Training Course on Rebuilding Communities through Healthcare Programs. I was also part of this course. So they conducted this training and made us trainers over there. Uh, currently, we are engaging with Sing Health uh, through NAHS, Nepalese Army Institute of Health Sciences. Uh, we are conducting webinars. The webinars are not that regular. We intend to make them regular. Recently, we conducted a field hospital design training in support with Sing Health and a patient safety training. Uh, there is a WHO patient safety framework. So Sing Health also helped us in building uh, these capacities. So we are engaging with Sing Health and we are seeking newer ways in which we can make this collaboration and support larger. Okay, this is uh, something uh, new that I recently, I'm learning. I'm not saying I'm uh, involved in this. Global Outbreak and Alert Response Network. Uh, this is an international and collaborative me mechanism from WHO. Uh, it is indebted for managing public health emergencies. It is similar to EMTs. Uh, so basically what it is, is if there is a public health outbreak over here in Nepal, and if we do not have the capacity uh, to prevent it, to control it, to investigate it, uh, there is a mechanism from Goan in which they will send experts from other countries uh, to help and support these kind of activities. I have just started learning uh, this in this platform. And it's uh, I can see few members from NISCOM who are along with me. And we hope we, that we were to learn better and to, so that we can also build our capacity in the NISCOM also later on. Or let's say I'm even learning phase me soon. It's a capacity building activity. capacity I'd like to share. On a, working with Guan, uh, we I got connected to this platform. What a platform is WHO CRU Guan Ra Empower School of Health, which is called as a big learning platform. Uh, what this is, this is the online platform. Uh, related to capacity building in supply chain management. So uh, because of COVID, we realized that there has been a serious disruption in the supply chain management, right? And in this, this displacement is so serious that the effects of this displacement will be visible for the next four to five years, right? So, in a country like ours, in which the supply chain management is not practiced uh, efficiently in a routine, a disaster ko time ma ta hamdi dekhi hai kios baat hai hamle apni covid ko time ma oxygen beds and everything because uh, we did not prepare our capacity well during that time. On this pasi every time we needed something new, uh, there was. Kios, right? oxygen, it's all because our supply chain management was not functional. We did not have a good supply chain system. So supply chain system, routinely, how do we do it? 
And during pandemics, how do we uh, cater? If you are interested to learn this, uh, I am an ambassador for this platform. Uh, I am supposed to uh, publicize this platform. Uh, publicity matra, you know, I even took a course from this platform. I found it very beneficial. So if you are interested in supply chain management, I will share the link of this platform and you can access the online courses uh, in this platform. Some are free, some you have to pay. And if you are interested in any uh, courses and that require large resources, please feel free to contact. I'll be able to lie with them and try to get help if possible. So with this, we come to the nearly end of the capacity building activities. All these capacity building activities are not done individually. Uh, sometime I have been a part of a team, sometime lead pani garyo, sometime support layer garyo, sometime international support layer garyo. Sometimes I just had to do it because I work with the Nepalese army, compulsion ko rupma pani garyo hola. But still, we have built it some or the other capacity, some amount of capacity in the Nepal. So, we have to do it in the healthcare sector. Ma, uh, capacity building activities ma, we have contributed, uh, but we cannot do this alone. Right? There's a saying from Helen Keller, which I like to also focus. It's, it requires a multi-sectoral approach and disaster management is a field which cannot be done alone. It's required help from multiple sectors. So we have done all these activities in collaboration and support from multiple sectors. Sometimes from our own organization, the Nepal Army Medical Corps. Some, sometimes from my, my own institute, Nepalese Army Institute of Health Sciences. Sometimes from health emergency operation centers and different government agencies. We have built a certain capacity working with NESCOM. And there's another society in which I'm also a founding member, National Society of Emergency and Disaster Risk Management. So much of the activities have been uh, we have been able to do because of the team that is in this society, the WHO, the ADPC, and many more organizations. So disaster risk reduction is a multi-sectoral approach. Capacity building requires huge amount of funding, huge amount of resources, and a passionate team, which can actually contribute in this cap, uh, capacity building activities. So we got collaboration and support from many institute, and we are very thankful for them as well. So with this, I nearly come to the end of my presentation. I was supposed to uh, give a poll, but I intend to ask questions visually that you can comment in the chat box. Dr. Gambhir, I think the chat box is accessible to all the uh, audience. Yeah, it is accessible. Okay. So I have three questions. Uh, I also project them one by one. And please answer, please answer in your chat box uh, based on these questions, right? There is a quiz, quiz one of the disaster epidemiology quiz one era. So in this picture, you see two families. In one family A, uh, it consists of four members in which all are illiterate. In family B, the father is graduate. Now in case of disaster, which family is more likely to survive? Can you, exp can you answer this? You can write in comment in the chat box. B, B, A, B, 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 okay. B, B, okay, most of the answers are B. Okay. Thank you for your uh, comments. Both have equal chances to survive. Very good answer from Krishna. Okay, let's move to the next question. We'll get back to the answers later on. Okay, 
Now a disaster situation. In this picture, you can see two children. One is a three-year-old child, another is a six-year-old child. Suppose there is an earthquake or a two earthquake going So who is more likely to survive? Three years wala body B. Okay, answer koile B. B. Okay. Equal both. Both, okay. Both. But both is not an option. You might have to choose. Eh? Depends upon circumstances. Okay. Okay. Most of you have answered it B. Anike answers three year old. We'll try to find out the answer. Well, let's come to the final question. Uh, in case of hurricane, what is the leading cause of death in hurricane? Trauma, hockey, electrocution, hockey, drowning. One, two, three. One, two, three. Hurricane, boy, death. Kele unse wala. Trauma, trauma, trauma. Okay, almost hundred percent of you have answered trauma. Exactly three drowning one was okay. Thank you, everyone. Most of your answers say Isaac. Now we'll try to explore the answers. And by exploring the answer, I want you to explore. community medicine I want you to explore on a field called as disaster epidemiology. You feel and contribute and if you do not contribute contribute in this field, what are the chances or what are the mistakes that we can make during disaster management? Okay, let's find out the answers. Okay, first question, Matsi, which family is more likely to survive after a disaster? There you go, answer B as a right. Let's find out the answer. Yota study bar is Bangladesh. Post cholera deaths are twice likely in poor Bangladeshi families with little schooling as compared to families with at least one graduate. Yes, most of you are correct. Uh, family B is expected more to survive. That is what I have conclusion. Education is an important predictor for survival. I'm the disaster response gonna collagi kati dere karza garsu, kati dere investment garsu. Just a simple intervention. Let us just highlight the importance of education in the country. Country my education bada idu, chances of survival afi bodaris. Education son sanga, mitigation pani afi learn udresa, prevention pani learn udresa. So this was highlighted by a study conducted in Bangladesh. So, most of you are correct. Right. I'm sorry. Let's go to survey. If you have answered A, if most of you have answered A, what do you think? Right? Now, since many people in this forum are from community medicine, well-oriented with epidemiology, answer is B, but most of the time I get the answer is family A. More robust, I know more survival could chance in her goons. They are always learning in deficit, living in deficiencies. Tilegor the Henin Soxola, one day, but they are more vulnerable as well. So, I am a family A, one era, I am a study Nogareco way, disaster co time. Kochi body survive Gareco Savner, study Nogareco way. Mortality rate, Kunz literate, illiterate Makoskuma body, Batsa, when I study Nogareco way. You might have drawn the conclusion that. Illiterate would survive more. And this will again go into policies and planning. I'm going to research paper, I'm going to evidence will go to policies and planning. And education ma banda will be spending more amount of money in bigger, bigger projects aimed as mitigation and just coach value for survival is very less than education itself. So here's the importance of disaster epidemiology that I like to highlight. We should practice conducting epidemiology in disasters. Right? I'm the 
एविडेन्स दिन सकूं रके राइट एविडेन्स दिन सकूं पोलिशी एंड प्लांग करने मानेक गो टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन थ्री इयर ओल्ड बडी सर्वाइव कर सिक्स इयर ओल्ड बडी सर्वाइव कर मोस्ट अफ यू हेव एंसर्ड सिक्स इयर ओल्ड विल सर्वाइव मोर बट एट नाइन्टीन सेवेन्टी सिक्स में गटमेला को अर्थक्वेक स्टडी वट इट वाइट फाउंड आउट वाज द डेथ रेट्स अमंग फाइव टू नाइन टाइम फाइव टू नाइन इयर ओल्ड चिल्ड्रेन वाज मोर देन बिलो फोर इयर ओल्ड चिल्ड्रेन सिक्स इयर को तो बड़ी डेथ भैर वाई बिकज ड्यूरिंग अर्थक्वेक गए पी द पेरेंट्स वट दे डू इज दे जेनरली दे पिकअप द स्मलर चिल्ड्रेन थ्री इयर हिड़न न सकने बच्चा पिकअप कर भागद अभी फाइव टू नाइन इयर्स चिल्ड्रेन से घर भित्र बस्त रहे एज अ रिजल्ट अफ विच दे वुड बी क्रस्ड इन साइड देयर ओन होम्स हाई पेरेंट्स ने नउठा भर आपू भी दौड़न सकेन पेरेंट्स ने नउठा भाव एगेन आई लाइक टू हाईलाइट द इंपोर्टेन्स अफ डिजास्टर एपिडेमोलॉजी अफ इयर मस्ट अफ वी एंसर थ्री इयर वर्ल्ड विल सर्वाइव कैरे विल डाई मोर वनर है तर तो होने रहे यदि हमें यही कुछ पोलिशी एंड प्लांग में लगा को भे अल आवर इंटरवेन्सन वुड हेव बीन सीफ्टेड टू दिस थ्री इयर ओल्ड एंड मदर्स इन कसरी बचाने वाले इंटरवेन्सन दिन्थ्य हो बट एट द एंड दिस सिक्स इयर ओल्ड पपुलेसन वुड बी डाइंग मोर सो ते भर यह नाइन्टीन सेवेन्टी सिक्स को अर्थक्वेक में गुक डिजास्टर एपिडेमोलॉजी को प्क्टिस वट इज हेल्पिंग नाउ इज मेकिंग स्कूल हेल्थ प्रोग्राम्स स्कूल में वी आर कंडक्टिंग एक्टिविटीज फर अर्थक्वेक मैनेजमेंट अर्थवेक को टाइम में कह भागने कसरी बस्ने कसरी आप सेव करने हमें एक्टिविटीज रन कर एज अ रिजल्ट अफ विच दे माइट बी सर्वाइविंग मोर सो दिस इज बेस्ड ऑन एविडेन्स हाई इफ वी डिड नट गैदर एविडेन्स ड्यूरिंग दैट अर्थक्वेक ये कुछ हमें आदेन थे अभी हमें सब एफोर्ट ये लगे लेट्स कम बैक टू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन हरिकेन वर्ज अ लिडिंग कज अफ डेथ इन हरिकेन अब हम को हरिकेन एक्जैक्टली नए पर आधी बेरी तो आई रह संगसंगे पानी धेरे पड़ रहा है मोस्ट अफ यू एंसर ट्रमा हाई हमें हरिकेन भित्ति ट्रमा याद आदि कि मानेल हावा आई रहो मैं यकाली रखो टाउ को में इसलिए ठोको मं ये ठोको गाड़ी उड़ी रख सब कुछ बट यू विल बी सरप्राइज नाइन आउट अफ टेन हरिकेन डेथ्स आर बिकज अफ ड्राउनिंग नट विंड So the leading cause of death, 90 percent is of deaths in hurricane. You see studies are very find out there. It's because of drowning. Hurricane carry a large amount of water along with them, and it will large amount of water. कुने एक वर्षा नो ठमा गरो पूर हो दे खेरी drowning गरो दे इस. अबे इसको implication. Most of us answered trauma. वने बस ये हमले तो हमले policy and planning गर दे खेरी तो हमरो all इंटरवेन्सन हम सब खर्च टाइम कता लगने रहे तो ट्रमा प्रिवेन्सन में हाई जबकि मं को डेथ तो ड्रनिंग होद जस तो सीम्पली स्कूल एज में अथवा यंग एज में सब स्विमिंग मत सीका प्रिवेन्ट कर सकते रहे हाई सो दिश इज एन एक्जापल अफ डिजास्टर एपिडेमोलॉजी जो विभिन्न ठावर में प्क्टिस हम विभिन्न ठाव में स्टडी भाषा कोविड में वी प्क्टिस दिस अलट सो व्हाट आई से इज एज अ कम्युनिटी मेडिसिन स्पेशलिस्ट वी सुड बी एक्टिवली इन्वल्व इन दिस फील्ड भोलि पर्सि कहीं कुछ डिजास्टर होने बितिक रैपिड एसेसमेंट बने गब्ल्यूएचओ एंड मेनी ह्यूमन एजेंसिज इसमें हमें लीड लिख सकूपर् हमें एक्सटेन्सिव रिसर्च कर ड्यूरिंग डिजास्टर्स के होता क्यों वी कैन नट साइमुलेट द इफेक्ट्स अफ डिजास्टर हेजार्ड लाइमुलेट कर सकता एफेक्ट्स लाइमुलेट कर सकते वनली थिंग टू लर्न इज फ्रम डिजास्टर इट्स सेल्फ हाई अर्थक्वेक के होता भाई कुछ अर्थक्वेक भैस मत था सो ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम इफ वी आर कैपेबल अफ कंडक्टिंग लार्ज स्केल स्टडीज एप्रोप्रिएट स्टडीज वी माइट कंट्रीब्यूट टू पोलिशी एंड प्लांग एंड भोलि पर्सि घट इसको इफेक्ट सो आई इन्करेज एवरी नेस्कम मेम्बर्स टू थिंक अबाउट दिस एंड थिंक अबाउट हाउ टू बिल्ड अ कैपेसिटी इन डिजास्टर एपिडेमोलॉजी एट एक्जापल आई लाइक टू सेयर टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन को अर्थक्वेक को यो मैप देखी रहने भाषा म स्लाइड तो हरा छे मेरे देखी रहो स्लाइड हेद्दे के देखने पर्चा अर्थक्वेक गयो टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन में 
नेशनल इमर्जेन्सी अपरेशन सेंटर ने एट मैप निले कि इट इज एन इनिशियल एस्टिमेट अफ एफेक्टेड एरियाज एस्टिमेट के निले में रेड कलर एरियाज आर हाईली एफेक्टेड एरियाज अल्लो अलग लेस एफेक्टेड बने सो यो इनिशियल एस्टिमेट में के भोने काठमंडू भक्तपुर ललितपुर धादिंग नुआकोट हाईली एफेक्टेड निस्क्यो हई बट आफ्टर वन विक हाई द विंटर मैप चेंज वेन द आर्मी वॉज मोबिलाइज ऑन फुट टू मेनी प्लेसेस हेन यो हाई एस्टिमेट को मैप नहीं रेड बा येलो में पुग्यो देन विथ द मैप चेंज सिंधुपालचोक सब भाई हाइएस्ट एफेक्टेड रही है इनिशियली सिंधुपालचोक वॉज येलो ये कसरी भे तो भाई कुछ ये कसरी भो भादा खेल हमीसंग एवरी डे न्यूज पेपर में मीडिया में धेरे वर्ष देखि एवट भे ठूल अर्थ को एक जान काठमंडू में अब बेला में काठमंडू भक्तपुर ललितपुर तहस नहस होने ये कुछ हमें हेड़से में अथवा धेरे पत्र पत्रि में मीडिया में देखते आया छोटे को आधार में हमें ये एस्टिमेट भी निल्य बट जब रियलिटी में आर्मी मोबिलाइज करो व्हाट द आर्मी डेड वाज दे प्क्टिस सू लेदर एपिडेमोलॉजी हाई सू लेदर एपिडेमोलॉजी हम जन उसे एपिडेमोलॉजी हो ड्यूरिंग द फर कोलेरा जोन स्नो ने हाई यू वेन्ट टू इच एंड एवरी हाउस अस पच्चीस वाटर सोर्स पत्ता लगा थे सो जुत्ता को सोल खीने गरी कि गरीने एपिडेमोलॉजी सू लेदर एपिडेमोलॉजी भो ऑन फुट वेन द आर्मी मार्च इन टू दिस डिस्ट्रिक्ट द मैप चेंज तर ते बेलासम कंसिक्वेन्स भैस कि सो मेनी पीपल फ्रम डिफ्रेंट कंट्रीज दैट केम टू ने सपोर्टिंग हस अमें उन् क्या मोबिलाइज गये तो इनिशियल फ्यू डेज में एक हफ्तासम हमें ये यो रेड एफेक्टेड एरियाज में मोबिलाइज गये कि बेस्ड ऑन दिस मैप है तर एक्चुअली द हेल्प तो बाहर चाहिए रहे ते पच्चीस दुई तीन दिन पीछे फोन आने थालों है ललितपुर नुआकोट बा यहाँ तो कई केस ही छेन यहाँ तो कई धेरे सीवियर केसेस नहीं हमें अलग काम लगने ठाव में पठान पर्यटन सो दिस इज वेर द इम्पोर्टेन्स अफ एपिडेमोलॉजी लाइज यदि हमें रैपिड एसेसमेंट छिटो छिटो कर सक्यौ डिस्ट्रिक्ट कर एविडेन्स पठान सक्यौं अलग तुरंत के भैर पठान सको मे बी विल बी एबल टू मोबिलाइज एप्रोप्रिएट रिशोर्सेज इन टाइम जस नाइन थाउजेंड डेथ्स जो भाषा सायद कम हो पैला को भाग कम भो भाई बट स्टिल द मेनी फैक्टर्स विच आर फेवरिंग देश डेथ्स शनिवार को दिन भाथ्यो दिवस भाथ्यो रात भाग थे एंड ऑल दोज थिंग्स हाई म एंड मोस्ट अफ द टाइम तो हमें पशुपतिनाथ ने नहीं बचा हाई हम कैपेसिटी तो हम बिल्ड भी कर सकता थे सो विथ दिस पिक्चर आई लाइक टू इन्करेज एवरी वन टू पोन्डर इन दिस फील्ड एंड ट्राई टू इन्हांस आवर बिल्डिंग कैपेसिटी इन डिजास्टर एपिडेमोलॉजी अभी डिजास्टर एपिडेमोलॉजी धेजना ने प्क्टिस जस्ट बिकज अफ प्क्टिशिंग डिजास्टर एपिडेमोलॉजी अलग हमें ठा डिजास्टर भग फिशियल फ्यू डेज में के इंपोर्टेन्स इंजुरीज हस्पिटल ने केटर करो डेड बडिज को मैनेजमेंट करू में फोर टू टेन डेज में पब्लिक हेल्थ यूटिलिटीज बिग्री कोलेरा एंड बैक्टेरियल डिसेंट्री फैलिन सकता तो पब्लिक हेल्थ सीस्टम एक्टिव हो टाइम में अभी टू टू थ्री विक्स में हम वैक्सीन सप्लाई सीस्टम ये डिस्टर्ब भाई ड्यूरिंग डिजास्टर वैक्सीन बोन डिजिज हमें फेस कर सकता राइजिंग सो ते केटर करो एंड थ्री टू सिक्स विक्स में वेक्टर बोन डिजिज क्या एक्सटेन्सिक इन्क्यूबेशन पीरियड हो दे अल्सो हेव टू डेवलप ऑन देम हाई हमें पोस्ट अर्थक्वेक देर हेज बीन इंक्रीज इंसिडेन्स अफ डेंगी केसेस अस पच्चीस डेंगी को लार्वा हेज बीन फाउंड एक्सटेन्सिवली हमें कम्युनिटी हेल्थ एक्टिविटीज हम लोग मेडिकल स्टूडेंट्स कराऊ वी हेव फाउंड एक्सटेन्सिव एडिज लार्वा थ्रू आउट द काठमंड वैली ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम सो यह बढ़ सकता एंड लंग टर्म में साइकोलॉजिकल एंड माल न्यूट्रिशन को प्रब्लम भी होता यह आई सकता है डिफ्रेंट ठावर डिफ्रेंट डिजास्टर एपिडेमोलॉजी प्क्टिस हमें ये पर्च टू कंट्रीब्यूट टू आवर ओन अंडरस्टैंडिंग अफ एपिडेमोलॉजी ड्यूरिंग डिजास्टर्स So with this, I come to the last slide. I'm le already come or go ahead. 
अब हम मेन चैलेंज बने सेल्फ सस्टेनिंग अफ ट्रेनिंग अलग गाड़े पब्लिक हेल्थ इमर्जेन्सिज को कैपेसिटी अज बढ़ा पर्स हमी लगी न्यू इयर थिंकिंग अफ न्यू इयर वेज इस कसरी लाने अभी एटा ट्रेनिंग हेल्प भाई आईसिआरसी ने कराँ हेल्थ इमर्जेन्सी इन लार्ज पपुलेसन विच 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 आई मैं चाहे पा थे दिल्ली में इंडिया में एंड विच वी विश टू कंटिन्ू इट ने अब इस रेड क्रसंग कसरी हो इसमें मोर अफ पब्लिक हेल्थ इमर्जेन्सिज कसरी मैनेज करने भाई कुरा अभी अर्क हमें कैपेसिटी बिल्डअप कर मेन एरिया केमिकल बायोलॉजिकल रेडियोलॉजिकल न्यूक्लियर एंड एक्सप्लोजिव इमर्जेन्सिज में हो ह्यूमन इंड्यूस डिजास्टर्स वी विल फेस दिस डिजास्टर्स अभी हमें ये करने पर्च संगसंगे यू होप संगसंगे देर आर न्यू प्रोग्राम्स दैट वी आर डिजाइनिंग कर्पोरेट प्रिपेरनेस फर इमर्जेन्सिज डिजाइन कर स्कूल में स्कूल प्रिपेरनेस फर इमर्जेन्सिज डिजाइनिंग कर मे बी इन फ्यूचर वी विल लंच दिस प्रोग्राम्स एज वेल सो डिजास्टर एपिडेमोलॉजी आई इन्करेज नेशनल मेम्बर्स टू डेवलप कैपेसिटी इन दिस हाई अभी ते पच्चीस लास्ट लाइट धरला ला कन्फ्यूजन होता हजार के भलनेबिलिटी के एक्सप्लेन करना खाली एट सीम्पल स्लाइड है इसमें एवं मउंटेन को मत ठूल ढुंगा छो खना लगा हजार हमी तो ढुंगा मुनी बस वी आर भलनरेबल फर दिस है अब ते हो अर्थक्वेक को लगी वी आर भलनरेबल फ्लड को लगी वी आर भलनरेबल लैंडस्लाइड को लगी वी आर भलनरेबल है तो खसो अभी ते पीछे तेज को इफेक्ट हम कम्युनिटी में होने बितिक डिजास्टर हो समथिंग कलेज प्रिवेन्सन यदि तो हजार नहीं रोक्न सको इट्स कलेज प्रिवेन्सन इट्स अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट थिंग टू डू ते भर हम प्रिपेरनेस में बड़ी फोकस कर अब मिटिगेसन में कर हजार अक्कर करना दिख तर ते इफेक्ट्स मिनीमाइज करने प्रयास कर प्रिपेरनेस में तो पिक्चर में देखने भो इसमें प्रिपेरनेस भाई अर्ली वर्निंग सीस्टम हो हाई वाले देखना खोजे फर अल काइंड अफ डिजास्टर्स और फर अल काइंड अफ हेजार्ड्स वी हेव अर्ली वर्निंग सीस्टम एक्सेप्ट अर्थक्वेक्स सो ये अर्ली वर्निंग सीस्टम लगाड़ी नहीं हमें यूज कर सको इसको इफेक्ट भी रिड्यूस कर सकता होगा विथ दिस आई कम टू द एंड अफ माई प्रोग्राम and i conclude my presentations if there are any questions i like i'll be happy to answer thank you uh, thank you dr navin wow that was great presentation moi le pani dherai sike haina i hope all the participants have enjoyed this session i feel so proud that uh, dr navin is a part of nescom and uh, he have helped uh, nescom to raise the name of this society मैं अज याद कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग इन सप्लाई चेन मैनेजमेंट को ट्रेनिंग होता खेल वहाँ के नेस्कम बाब्जर्वर कोई इंट्रेस्ट होने आने तलब कर इसमें इवन मस कैजुअलिटी मैनेजमेंट प्लान अथवा कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग इन सप्लाई चेन मैनेजमेंट में कसला इंट्रेस्ट वहाँ के सहयोग कर दैट इज सो नाइस अफ हिम Uh, Dr. Navin have done a tremendous activities on uh, capacity building, uh, on disaster management. I'm the very soon you, hey, not only in Nepal but also in South Asia. We still have seventy uh, seats participant here, and uh, though we are somewhat late, uh, we still have seventy six participants. And now uh, I would like to request the participant to put your questions in the chat box or raise your hand if you have any queries to Dr. Navin, and we'll be taking some of the questions from the participants. Just a little bit, our webinar was already held. This time we used to uh, have a poll, uh, five questions. Uh, out of these two questions were related to NESCOM and three were related to presentation. Presentation uh, in the related to presentations were already uh, shown by the shown by the presenter. Now uh, I would like to request the team to show the uh, poll that uh, that is related to NESCOM.
Can anyone confirm that uh, the poll has been shared? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Anu Marhata. Okay. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll be taking some questions. Uh, till then, uh, I request all the participants to, uh, to fill the poll. Uh, Dr. Gambir, yeah. uh, yes. I just like to apologize. Yeah. I am one of the body, the body, the body, the body, I like to apologize, and I, but I like to thank everyone for staying. Hi, thank you yeah, so but much. But still, we have more than 75 <laughs> participants in our webinar. Hi, thank you so much for staying. If there are any questions, please feel free. Any questions, because of your capacity build up, because of your join, uh, I'll, I'll be able to answer. Please feel free. Otherwise, email will be done by the way, but it's Okay, I don't see any questions over here or hand raised. I have no personal questions with me, Dr. Novin. Just to tell you, WHO regional EMTs are going to be done. In this case, if a disaster occurs in some country, then our regional EMT is born a quick but matra of medical team or deployed to new key or who only kids are yes ma'am yes but all you get it other one of these no one like oh it's cool concept me okay uh disaster only with the case of one day here yes help gone me when I'm a son sir body for multiple teams or dance on case on sir body I know we say there is anything help a gun than one set or a subject of invested interest ones अनि कति जनाको क्यापसिटी र क्यापेबिलिटी मिल्दैन पनि रहेछ के हामीलाई चाहिएको एउटा कुरा अनि त्यसपछि त्यहाँ पुग्ने आरके टिम रहेछ अब अर्थक्वेक भयो इनिसियल विकमा त हामीलाई ट्रोमा सँग रिलेटेड मोर क्यापसिटी सर्च एन्ड रेस्क्यु गर्ने क्यापसिटी चाहिन्छ के मेडिकल क्यापसिटी भन्दा पनि बढी तर मेडिकल क्यापसिटी पब्लिक हेल्थको क्यापसिटी अगाडि आइपुग्यो भने भनेपछि त्यो रिसोर्स त वेस्ट हुन्छ नि सो डब्ल्युएचओ ले के भनेछ भन्दाखेरि पहले से संसार बोल नेशनल ईएमटीज़ और लाइसे स्टैंडर्डाइज़ करो मनेरा दे हैव अ बुक कॉलेज ब्लू बुक अनितेश पर जितने बुक को अंडर में अनितेश पर जितने विल हेल्प देम स्टैंडर्डाइज़ देर ऑन टीम्स और सब बोल डिजास्टर भाई हो बने से द वोस्ट कंट्री जहाँ से डिजास्टर भागो से त्यो कंट्री ले से the disaster affected area and more more chaos created by the So, I let's say EMT say, I'm there really, as a country prepare for the standardized government for you. And during disaster, the worst country, like Malay, is to say, whenever support marks and it is to support say, most of us, whenever we like communicate for it, but we can go. So, that is the main aim. And this goes to example, say, IT co earthquake. Large amount of amputation by the two time are not needed amputation. Right? Those amputations were not needed during that time. Two amputations, say, Amro, you earthquake ma, work earthquake ma, because it was coordinated well. Surma Army coordinated got a foreign medical teams like Pasi, HUC, NHRC, so through coordinator Amro Sanga Gore Bakubaira, two Unapaina, one of the evidence for in this case. तो तब ये तो जाना पाई है ना पहले अपने कैपेसिटी बिल्डअप करें तो जाना पड़ेगा तो आह अली स्क्रॉल दी चैट बॉक्स इफ देर से एनी क्वेश्चंस आई डोंट थिंक देर से एनी क्वेश्चंस ओके देर इज अ वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम डॉक्टर आबा आह हाउ इज सेक्युरिटी इंश्योर्ड ड्यूरिंग डिजास्टर विद द इनफ्लो ऑफ Dr. Abba, I would just like to say that we have to do what we have to do. At the beginning, initially, when we were in the earthquake, large number of people flew in. 
अनि त्यसपछि वी डिड नट ह्याभ एनी कोलाबोरेटिभ मेकानिजम अनि मान्छे जहाँ मनलाई त्यही गएको भनेर वी फाउन्ड आउट सो इनिसियली हामीसँग उनीहरूसँग कोर्डिनेट गर्ने केही मेकानिजम पनि थिएन अनि कसलाई कहाँ पठाउने कसरी आइरहेको त्यो डाटा पनि थिएन भनेपछि अनि नेपाल आर्मी इस्टाब्लिस्ड अ सेन्टर कल एज मल्टी एमएनएमसीसी मल्टी नेसनल मिलिटरी कोर्डिनेसन सेन्टर जुन चाहिँ मिलिटरी पर्सनल संसारबाट जहाँ आए पनि आफै दे दे कुड नट गो टु एनी साइट फर्स्ट दे ह्याभ टु कोलाबोरेट विथ नेपाल आर्मी आफ्नो क्यापेसिटी र क्यापेबिलिटी के हो भनेर देखाउनु पर्छ अनि बेस्ड अन देयर निड दे वर डिप्लोइड यो चाहिँ यही सेक्युरिटी रिजन्सहरू इन्स्योर गर्नुको लागि तर सिभिल फोर्सेस सिभिल सरी सिभिल टिम्सहरू पनि आउन थाले पछि त्यो सिभिल टिम्सहरूको डेटा त मिलिटरी उसमा आएन एमएनएमसीसीमा अनि इनिसियली दे स्टार्टेड गोइङ एनी वेयर एनी टाइम यसले गर्दाखेरि एउटा के पर्पोजको लागि आएको पनि थाहा भएन के गर्न आएको पनि थाहा भएन अनि अर्को उहाँहरूको आफ्नै सेक्युरिटी पनि हामीले मेन्टेन गर्न सकेनौँ किनभने कहाँ जानु भएको छ भने नि आइडिया भएन नि त सो त्यसैले देशमा स्ट्रक्चर राम्रो नभएको भएर एमएनएमसीसीले नै सुरुमा उनीहरूलाई उहाँहरूलाई नै चाहिँ कोर्डिनेट गऱ्यो अहिले चाहिँ हाम्रो राम्रो सिस्टम डेभलप गरेको छ हेल्थ इमर्जेन्सी अपरेसन सेन्टरले एनी सिभिलियन टिम्स फरेन मेडिकल टिम्सलाई चाहिँ हेल्थ इमर्जेन्सी अपरेसन सेन्टरले कोर्डिनेट गर्छ फर्स्ट दे ह्याभ टु रिपोर्ट टु हेल्थ इमर्जेन्सी अपरेसन सेन्टर एन्ड बेस्ड अन देयर निड दे विल बी सेन्ट टु अ रिक्वायर्ड साइट अल द मिलिटरी टिम्स दे विल कोर्डिनेट थ्रु एमएनएमसीसी मल्टी नेसनल मिलिटरी कोर्डिनेसन सेन्टर फ्रम द नेपाल आर्मी होइन अनि दे क्यान नट गो एनिवेयर दे विल बी डिप्लोइड बेस्ड अन निड अनि त्यसपछि इफ दे रिक्वायर सेक्युरिटी त्यो पनि हामीले प्रोभाइड गर्छ अहिलेलाई चाहिँ यो दुईटा सेन्टरबाट वी प्रोभाइड दिस टू थिङ्स आई होप आई एन्सर्ड युर क्वेसन्स थ्याङ्क यू डक्टर नवीन सो द पोल इज अन आई आई एम गेटिङ द एन्सर्स फर द पोल ओके लेट्स गिभ सम टाइम टु द पार्टिसिपेन्ट सो एज दे क्यान कम्प्लिट द पोल मिन वेल ओके I'll see the chat box if there is any questions. Uh, there is no additional question in the chat box as well as in the what is okay. Thank you. So, uh, uh, okay, I'll be answering the poll now. Uh, NISCOM did its first conference in. Fifty percent said that it is in NAIHS. Twenty-seven percent BPKHS. 16% DUTS, 10% KUSMS. The answer is NAIHS. We have held the first conference of NESCOM at NAIHS. And the second question is, uh, who is the current vice president of NESCOM? 12% uh, said uh, it's uh, Dipesh Tamrakar, 16% Surya Porajali, 60% Pranil Man Singh, and 12% Prajol. And the right answer is uh, Pranilman Singh Pradhan. Thank you everyone for participating in the poll. I don't see any additional questions at this point of time. Finally, uh, if Dr. Uh, Navin want to say anything, uh, then please, free, please, please be free to speak. Otherwise, I would like to thank everyone for being here till the end. And I would like to request Master of Ceremony, Dr. Elisa to close this session. Thank you. Dr. Elsa. Yes, Dr. Gambir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gambir, for uh, wonderfully moderating the session today. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. On behalf of all our participants and NESCOM webinar series team, I would like to thank our speaker, Dr. Naveen, for enlightening our uh, perspectives and throwing more light on capacity building and disaster risk reduction. And uh, the presentation was so beautifully presented, sir, that we didn't have much questions. And the webinars that we are conducting wouldn't have been possible without the continual efforts put in by different teams in the NESCOM webinar series group. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our NMC CPD accreditation team, uh, especially Dr. Smriti, Dr. Anu, and Dr. Baidei for facilitating and devoting their time 
for acquiring CPD points for all our participants. Our technical team, Dr. Surya, Dr. Mr. Nirajan Parajuli from NREN, and our fourth year MBBS students from BPKIHS, Madhusudan, Sajan, and Kumar for your valuable inputs in sorting out the security issues and ensuring that our webinar is more secure. I would like to acknowledge the entire team of NESCOM webinar series, Dr. Abha, Dr. Prerna, Dr. Puspanjali, Dr. Nikita, Dr. Pallavi, Dr. Ayesha, Dr. Priya Darshini, and Dr. Kapil for always being there for whatsoever help needed. Last but not the least, thank you so much, Dr. Prajol Pakuril, for taking the initiation of starting this webinar series, who has been taking the back seat since day one and coordinating, guiding, and mentoring us all, and ensuring that even minute details are on place and making our webinars a grand success. All of this, uh, whatever we have been doing, wouldn't have been possible without you, Dr. Prajol. I would once again like to thank all our participants for showing an overwhelming response and believing in us. And we had around 80 participants today in our webinar. And I would like to uh, bring to your notice that our next webinar will be on 2nd of March, 2022, about problems of geriatric population, social health insurance scheme for elderly, and challenges of running a geriatric home in Nepal, which will be presented by Dr. Lochana Shrestha, which is current, who is currently the president of Nepalese Society of Community Medicine, NESCOM. With this, we are at the end of our webinar for today and hope to see you in our next webinar. Till then, stay safe and stay happy and good night and take care. Thank you.